Hi guys, it's Dylan from Bijou Diamond Jewelry in London again with another watch review and apologies for not so many reviews recently. Uh, we've been extremely busy over Christmas, but I thought I'd try and get this one done for you. Um, today we are looking at the Rolex Daydate, specifically in rose gold, and we're also looking at two models from the Daydate range, um, the 36mm and the 40mm. We've already reviewed the 40mm. If you haven't seen that already, then go and check that review out. I'll give you a basic overview of the history of the Daydate. It was released in 1956. Um, it was originally released in a 36mm case size. It was quite similar to a Datejust in terms of appearance, uh, but the difference between the Datejust and the Daydate uh, is kind of in the name, and that was the fact it had a day function as well as the date function. Unlike the Datejust, the Daydate only came in precious metal which made it kind of right at the top of Rolex's range in terms of watches, because in order to own one, it had to be obviously in precious metal and therefore really expensive. So it was seen as the top of the line Rolex to have. And that tradition of only precious metals continues today. All the day dates are available in white gold, uh, platinum, rose gold, and yellow gold. The day date also featured a new style bracelet and concealed clasp as well. So you can see on the clasp, it's kind of hidden away within the bracelet and, and really conforms to the bracelet. The bracelets were also quite similar to the Datejust. We can see that the Jubilee has a few more links per sort of section of bracelet. The President bracelet's a little bit more uh, chunky with its links. Um, I prefer it, I think it's much slicker and a little bit more manly, but I know people went mad in the comments saying, oh, you're saying it's a Jubilee's a woman's bracelet. I never said that. I said it's a little bit more feminine in a way because the finer links create a little bit more of a sparkle, which is what I was talking about. So the Day Date kind of got famous when Rolex offered a Day Date, well, it was actually a date just. They offered the watch to President Eisenhower to wear um, and he made it famous. And then a few other presidents wore the same Day Date after that or a Day Date after that. And that gave its name the presidential watch or presidential bracelet. That sort of added to the whole thing or stigma of this watch being the top of the line Rolex because Rolex offered it to the president to wear. So it was definitely seen as the best Rolex to have. Um, and I personally think it's still one of the best Rolexes to own. The Day Date is an incredible watch. If we skip a few years on to 2008, uh, the Day Date 2 was released, which was a 41 mil case size uh, Day Date. Um, and the original one was 36. So until that time, it had been a smaller end watch. Uh, versus the Daytonas and all these other watches that was 40 mil. And then in 2015, the Day Date 40, which is like an updated version of the Day Date 2, uh, was released and that's what we're looking at here. So that's a little bit of history behind these two watches. Let's compare some of the different features between these two watches. So they're both in rose gold, which helps us out a little bit in terms of uh, a fair comparison, but they're obviously different sizes. So we'll ignore that for now and kind of look more of the inner details. What's quite nice is they're both specced slightly differently. So I can kind of show you what um, different features would look like on each size. So let's start with the bracelet because that's one of the most obvious differences between these two watches. So with the 36 mil day date, we have a oyster bracelet. And on the 40 mil day date, we have the presidential bracelet or president bracelet. As you can see, they both have those concealed clasps. They look really slick and clean. It doesn't stick out like the Oyster Flex clasps on the Daytonas and GMTs, Submariners, etc., etc. I prefer them. They're much smarter, they're much more streamlined, um, and they're much harder to dink. They definitely suit that higher end appearance of the Day Date. As you can see on the Oyster bracelet on the 36mm, the links are much larger. It's a quite a simple looking design. It doesn't shine the light off like the presidential bracelet does. Um, and it also doesn't conform to a wrist quite as well as the presidential bracelet does. And that's purely because the links are much smaller on the presidential bracelet, therefore they can conform to weirder shapes or you know, um, any wrist basically. They both have polished center links and brushed outer links. I think the more scratch prone bracelet of these two is definitely the Oyster bracelet. Because it's flat, it's much easier to scratch that surface. Whereas the presidential bracelet, sure you can definitely scratch it, but it's harder to notice because they're round. You can also only really scratch the very extreme part or the outer part of that rounded link. Now let's turn the watches over and look at the bezels. So the bezel options are quite unique on these two watches. You can get them both with diamond bezels um, and the Day Date 40 in yellow gold actually offers a couple more diamond options. Um, but on the 36, 
mil day date, we've got a domed bezel or smooth bezel. That is not available on all the day date 40 models. That is available on the platinum, but not the other metals. You can also have the day date 36 with a fluted bezel, like we can see here on the day date 40. That's kind of like the iconic day date or date just bezel. Um, I really like the fluted bezel. I think that's actually one of the best features on this day date 40 that we're looking at today. And it's a shame that I can't show you on the 36 but it's also good that we can compare the two watches and, and bezels like that. Of the two bezels, I prefer the fluted. I think it suits the watch much better, has so much life and sparkle, um, and it goes with that presidential bracelet. And coming back to the bracelets again, I much prefer the presidential bracelet as well on this. I think the oyster bracelet looks a little sporty, um, not quite as dressy as that or elegant even as the uh, presidential bracelet. So let's look at some more other comparisons. The dials, there are so many options for both of these watches, so it's pretty pointless me going in depth with those. I prefer the Roman numerals on the Day Date 40 much more than the uh, Roman numerals they offer for the Day Date 36 because they're much more angular, they're much more modern looking. Uh, they look like the fluted bezel. Um, I think that's one of the best features on this watch actually, on the 14th mil uh, Day Date are those Roman numerals. They just catch the light in such a magical way. The 36 mil day date Roman numerals are very flat and I know we can't compare it on this one, but they do look quite similar to these numbers. Of the two dials, I much, much prefer the day date 40. I love that CD effect, that kind of brushed inward effect. Um, I think it's a stunning look. And obviously this being the 60th anniversary day date uh, with the green dial is a very special version of the 40 mil. In terms of function, these watches are both exactly the same. They function the same. They both have that really useful feature of being able to change the date and the day uh, on the same part within the crown mechanism. So you turn the crown clockwise and you change your date and then you turn it anti-clockwise and you end up changing your day. It's really nice the way they've incorporated that both into one section within the crown uh, rather than having to pull out the crown a few more times to be able to access the day and then the date. The hands on the two watches are exactly the same. It looks like the Day Date 40 has a slightly finer or thinner uh, seconds hand. Uh, it looks much more elegant, but I actually really like the legibility of the dial on this 36 mil, especially obviously it's black and, and the rose gold hands really um, pop off that dial. It makes it really easy to read. Now in terms of actual case proportions and the way it's designed, they're actually quite different. The Day Date 40 is far more angular and sharp edged and very crisp. Um, and you can see that when the light shines off it, it's very, very angular. If you look at the lugs, you can see it's a sharp, sharp edge on the lugs on the Day Date 40, whereas on the 36, everything's quite rounded. I know that's not helped by this domed bezel because uh, that gives it an even more rounded appearance. Um, but it's a much more bubbly looking watch. The four mil difference between these two watches is definitely noticeable, but it's not noticeable in a bad way. It doesn't look crazy bigger than 40 mil. Uh, I actually think it's done so nicely. Um, and I think it just suits the design far more than the 36. I think the 36 is obviously the original design and, and the original watch. So in that respect, you know, it is the true day date. But I do really like what they've done with the 40, adding that sort of slightly more modern look with the sharper edges and crisper design. Once you get them both on your wrist, you can definitely tell the day date 40 is bigger. It's one of the best proportion watches out there. It's amazing. It looks stunning on the wrist. I love the, the way the bracelet interacts and it just looks really, really, really smart on the wrist. It fits my wrist perfectly, I think. Um, the 36 is too small for me, I think. Uh, I would never have this because I just think it's far too small and I know that the 40 looks much better. But for girls and, and guys with smaller wrists or guys who prefer smaller watches, um, again, don't hate because I've said stuff about watches being too small for me and then everyone goes, ah, I wear that one. I, it's not that I don't like it or I think it's too small for every guy or every girl. It just doesn't work for me, I don't like it. Because it's also smaller, it actually feels like it sits higher on your wrist. And that's because it's not got as much um, sort of surface area to volume ratio, if you understand what I mean. Price-wise, there's not major difference in price between these two watches. I think it's about 4,000 pounds difference. Obviously, there's much more metal that's gone into the 40 mil and it's a newer design. Uh, I definitely prefer it. And if I was looking between these two watches, I would spend the extra money on the 40 mil. If you come to us rather than Rolex, then the difference between these watches is actually far less than four grand. 
Let us know in the comments which one of these two watches you prefer, 36mm or 40mm. Again, apologies for the lack of reviews recently. Uh, obviously, like I said, Christmas is a very busy time for us and I just haven't had the time to do any watch reviews. Um, we will be starting up with some more uh, watch reviews in the new year. I'm hoping to get lots of new reviews out there for you guys. Um, and also looking at doing some jewellery reviews as well. Mm -hmm.